All right, so this one is a very simple workflow. It's around getting help. Um, and so this is a work in progress chapter. It's not there in the, pre in the previous, the first edition. So they are, they are working on this chapter. So this is the first time we, we are seeing this chapter in the R for data science book. Um, so it just shows you resources for getting help. I think majority of the time in your learning journey, you'll be spending it um, looking for resources that can assist you in either debugging or learning more. So what the author says is that the book is not an island, so you can't really get the entire mastery of R. Uh, you need to, you'll have questions or problems you'll run into in your journey that you'll need to find elsewhere other than the book. So what the, this chapter is looking at is just um, a few tips to get you help and to help you keep learning. Um, so the first one is obviously Google. Um, so Google is your friend. If you are stuck, always try to, um, you can start with Google search. So typically add R to a query. So maybe I can demonstrate. So for instance, I keep getting this warning, cannot remove package um, or warning in install packages, problem coping. So I can just Google that if I needed help. And then uh, drop it in my R. And then always, make it relevant to so put our package um, and therefore you can you get different um, problems around uh, different um, different areas so some of them could be a Microsoft so problem which I think I'm also facing because it's doing um, files so sometimes the solution is not under R or any st stack overflow sort of resources. It could be, for instance, my problem is uh, an operating systems problem because I'm having problem with, um, with permissions. So this is the exact same problem that I'm having permission denied. So I don't have the necessary federal permission to write to the current R. Um, so it probably is where my location is in terms of where my ad user is, so I'll try to do that later on. So as you can see, what I've demonstrated is that um, you can just Google and find all type of quest of useful, um, useful resources to help you with your error as you go along. So it's a very learning to understand what the error message is and then knowing how the search terms to use is helpful. Um, Important to note is if your error message isn't in English, you probably, if you're coding in another language in R, it's unfortunately most of, there's a lot of resources in English, the English language. So it might be helpful to, to convert your error message into English by using this, um, by setting this, system environment variable. So basically what you're doing is you're setting your environment language to English. And therefore when you rerun the code and you'll get them the error, the error message in English rather than the your system environment language. If Google doesn't help, um, mostly you'd look at the top resources are normally coding or crowdsourced coding environment. So if I can go back and see who are the tops. Can I go back? So you can see the first result if it's an, I hope you can all see my screen, my Google. It's, I've moved oh, from Oh, we cannot see, we can't see your Google screen. You are still sharing your house studio. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, So I had gone through, so I had searched for the error that I'm having in my R Studio. I hope you can see this now. 
Yes, yes. Or maybe I can just share my entire screen so that if I switch between. Um, so I hope you can now see. I can switch between R yes, and you can see that. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so I remember we have this problem. So I'm trying to install packages, but I'm getting a problem in, um, I don't have permissions for R to remove prior installation of packages. So that's what I have Google in, um, in Google, which is the first, uh, the first tip that we're being provided, Google is your friend. So if you're stuck, typically you will run an R query. Uh, you will start with a Google search. Um, typically you need to add R to your search query so that it's relevant to R and not any other, so R, other programming language. So I put this as uh, the problem that I'm facing, which is warning in install pro packages, problem coping R package. And we have a variety of resources. So the first one is always Stack Overflow, which is a very big community in debugging code and asking for questions. There is Community R Studio. Um, and then there's also Microsoft, because I think this is a problem with my operating system. So Microsoft has also answers. So Google provides a very rich resource for debugging code. Um, other than Stack Overflow, if you have any question, whether it's a statistical question as well, you can always search. Uh, make sure you tag it as R so that you get R related um, solutions. And so that's the the first the first uh, source that you you can rely on. Um, if Google doesn't help, look at Stack Overflow. Um, so you can always look for answers that have there are plenty of answers that have been crossed crowdsourced on Stack Overflow. So you can use that as a as a resource. Um, the next step, the next tip is making a reprex. So what a reprex is is a minimal reproducible example. So a good reprex makes it easier for other people to help you, and you often figure out the problem yourself. So there are two parts. First, you need to make your code reproducible. That means you need to capture everything, including the library calls that you are doing and the necessary objects, whether it's a data or functions or um, variables that you've created for that session. So the easiest way to do this is to use the reprex package, which I'll demonstrate. Um, and then the second is you need to make it minimal. So strip away everything that's not directly related to your problem, um, which is usually creating much smaller, simpler R object than the one you're facing in real life. So if you have a large database, I mean, data set, it's easier to create a sample that uh, can demonstrate your problem. Um, why do this? It sounds like a lot of work, but 80% of the time you will, when you are redoing, when you're, Minimizing your code or redoing your code um, in creating a reprex, you'll maybe even wind up finding the error that where you made a mistake. And then 20% of the time, you'll be able to, to reproduce um, the problem that you're facing for someone else to tackle. And you can post that on you can post that on reprex, I mean on Stack Overflow for people to find answers. So when creating a reprex by hand, so we'll try and demonstrate the reprex package. So let's say you have an error um, with at this point. So what you do is you just copy paste the code that's giving you a problem. And then you call the reprex package. Oh no. Oh, I'm still having problems with my, my, my packages. I think we did something. Your package, I think those package are. Yeah. So let me try again.
Oh, okay. So maybe I will share. Let me go to the example. Okay, I'm having problems with this was working before, but I guess when we were trying to update my packages, something just failed. Um guess I'll just have to yeah, anyway. Oh so, maybe yeah. I will share my own house studio so you can yeah. just be explaining from here. Yes. I'm trying to start scripts. Open scripts. Let me share. Yeah, please. Go back. Let's start sharing this. So we have this. Okay. Yeah. So the next I think is to call the replex. Yes, so you copy it, you have it in your clipboard, um, and then you call the reprex. I'm coming. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's done. Where is it? Yeah, you are seeing which, what are you seeing now? Is the house studio? You are seeing my house studio? Yes, you are seeing your house studio. Okay, so we have this. We have this, so we call. So it will render somewhere on the side. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to render reprex. Oh, sorry, I did so not copy. You need to copy into your clipboard, yeah. I've copied this. So and then run. I render then the reprex. Yes. So, so when now we have this. You can copy that and um use this for your, uh, for paste it in Stack Overflow somewhere where you can get help. I think the reprex is supposed to. I think if you're using- It can like, also enable some like session info to give us more specific information. We can set it to be true. Yeah. Uh, there are some other render. Uh, default is true. Advertise. Style. We can use the styler package. Yeah. Comments. There are some other information. Let's see this again. Copy this to clipboard. Then call Reprex. So like for the session info, I can just check that it will show me the version of R I'm using. It's also going to give us information about uh, the packages that are load currently loaded. So that somebody can easily look through, we can see which where the packages are coming from. Is it from CRAN? Like you were having issue with this package then you can see mine, everything is, I'm using the latest version of R. There is also show the X form with R YAML. So it just give us key information about uh, the reprex in which we are creating, such that somebody can easily walk through uh, the, the reprex package and also look at uh, the, uh, the code. They can easily figure out, oh, you are using so so, -so packages. I think these packages, there is a latest version of so so package I think you can just proceed. All right. Um, so I can proceed. So yeah, so that one helps you recreate um, a reproducible example. So the other example was when if you have data, um, So if you, for instance, if you have data, you can use dput um, to generate the R code needed to create it. Um, and then 
copy the outputs and put it in reprex. So maybe Oluwafemi, you can demonstrate that one. Um, so it was, you can deput MT cars to get the a reproducible example or sample of the MT cars database, and then just copy the structure um, and the values. And then now you can copy all that and run it on Reprex. From the variable name empty curve. Hello, Olof, are you there? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I did not know I was muted. I did not know I was muted. Yeah. So I, what I was saying, the book ad, advised us that we should try as much as possible to reduce uh, this data set. We should only present only those variables that are leading us to the issues at hand, the problem. Rather than we showing the entire of this as our reprex in which we are going to post maybe in Stack Overflow, in the Slack channel, we should reduce our this data set to only those specific uh, uh, variables that are that is leading us to the problem such that once we just post this code, uh, it will be easy for person, person, the, our potential, somebody that is going to help us fix this code the code will be neater for them to easily go through the code. They can is once going through the code, they can easily spot out uh, the, the specific portions uh, in which they are having issues. They can easily fix that portion. Oh, they can just say, if you do this this way, I think this is going to fix uh, the problem. So that is my own input. Thank you for that. Um, I also have. Um an example of um, how I used Stack Overflow to get uh, to get help with my code. Okay, let um, me stop sharing so that you show that. Yeah. So once you are able to create a reproducible minimum code, you can now share it with the world to help you um, to help you solve it. So an example from my previous engagement um, is this. So this is about three years ago. Um, so I was trying to, to do something which I guess was um, a data cleaning, um, a data cleaning ex uh, exercise. Um, using a Tramina, which is a package in R. And um, so I was having problems where the, there was no, there was a problem with the sequential ordering of events. So I was able to, so this is before I knew about the Reprex. So I think if I had Reprex, it would have been 
it will have made generating this code so much easier. So I was able, you need to show the libraries. So this brings me to the next step, what you need to show. Um, you need to uh, include all the, the dependencies that are in your code, which are the libraries. Uh, you need to include data. So this is um, a dummy data set. So you can see I'm creating um, a column ID, which is just based on repetitions, um, a time frame based on a sequence between zero and three, um, and then some event codes. I was looking at healthcare data, and then I was able now to follow through. So this is a minimum reproducible code that I was able to generate and upload, and then give the output produced versus what you expect. Um, so this is what I was getting but I wanted it to be ordered um, in this way. And then I was able to get people to interact with me in terms of looking for the answer. Um, and then you have one answer which I upvoted because it was useful and it, was, it, um, it enabled me to get the answer, to get the solution. So yeah, so that's basically the how to create a reprex. So this is your, your minimum reproducible code, and then you can upload it to Stack Overflow or any other community uh, community platform for solving um, R-related code issues or statistic-related code issues. Um, Stack Overflow is general code, but you have um, one for statistics that answers statistics-based questions. Um, so I guess we can continue. Um, so that's that. Um, so yeah, make sure you spend time to ensure the code is easy for others to read. Always use comments. Uh, make use of spaces and variable name concisely, and then do your best to remove everything that's not related to the problem. So the shorter the code, the better. Um, and then always test that your minimum reproducible code works by starting a new R session and copy pasting your script in. So I guess the benefit of starting a new R session, it will clear all your history and your outputs. So you're able to see if they are libraries that you have missed calling or data that you haven't created or variables or functions that you need to call in your minimum reproducible code for it to work. And then lastly, um, uh, you need to invest in yourself. The last tip from the authors in terms of getting help, uh, you need to spend some time learning R each day, um, which will pay off handsomely. So one way is looking at the Tidyverse blog, which has um, different topics around Tidyverse. Um, keeping up with the community, R community. So there is an R weekly, um, uh, what's it called, newsletter sort of, where you can get news um, in a week, each week on what is going on in R. Um, if you're on Twitter, you have influencers like Hadley Wickham, um, Garrett, and, but you also have our studio tips to keep up with the new features in the IDE. Um, you can also follow the R stats hashtag for content in terms of um, uh, learning materials, questions. Um, there's also data science, I mean, visualization competitions that are also there to kind of keep you um, actively developing your skills. So I guess that's the end. It's a very short um, chapter around getting help. I hope that has been useful. Oh yes, Teddy Tuesday, thank you all for me. Um, yeah.
Okay, thank you. I think Captain Dykes, that is all for the summary of the first part, which is all about the whole game. So we have seen how we can transform. And today we have seen how we can generate a minimal a reproducible example because it's always key because for anybody uh, to be able to help you uh, fix your code, to help you solve issues in which you have been stuck in your code, you need to make your code uh, reproducible because I must be able to pick your own code and run it in my own machine. And I must be able to get the same output just the same way you are getting at your own end before I can be able to uh, profile solution uh, to it. I think the next part of this book, which is starting from chapter 12, we'll be looking at transform, we'll be looking at different transformation techniques in which we, such as logical vectors, numbers, strings. We also look at some regular expressions, uh, which will be starting up from next week, uh, Monday. I think if you look at the pin post also, there is also in the Slack, there is uh, the sign up sheets where you can pick up any chapters in which you are, have interest in, in which you want to really learn more, you can just sign up for the chapter. Then we come forward uh, with presentation, but if there is no one that will sign up, I think I will have to present the chapter on that week. I think uh, Bessie, I really thank you once again for presenting the chapter. I think it was clear. I learned a lot from this. I think that is all what uh, we have uh, for today. I don't know if there are any questions, any other, I think, Olukunle Basha, do you have any comments, any inputs? That is all what oh, we have. Well, the, the chapter was very clear. She presented it very clear and then, uh, just like you said, I learned something new also. So um, thank you very much, Ben, for presenting this uh, chapter to us this evening. It was um, really, really exciting. Thank you very much. Thank you both for being here. OK, so I think we'll meet again next week. I think due to the daylight saving time, we all book club was delayed by one hour. So our just have it in mind that the book club is delayed by one hour. We are not starting our at our regular time again, all book club. Yeah. So we we'll meet right. next week, uh, Monday, the same time to discuss uh, the next chapter. Thank you all for joining today. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Okay, bye. Bye.